Virgo, welcome to the Winds of Jupiter yearly 2018 tarot reading. Now we're transitioning into 2018. It's hard to believe that 2017 just slipped by. And then we had that spectacular August 21st total solar eclipse. And boy, I think the earth is still ringing from that and our lives are reverberating from that. Now I'm going to be doing my seven point chakra spread. The seven cards have clarification cards with them, and they represent the chakra points of the body. Now the cards on the left are your past, and the cards on the right are your future. And the cards to the right of the past cards on the bottom, it's the base of your spine. And this is experiences from your past lives, through your childhood, up to the present, and how you feel about it. And the cards up above, for your sacrum or pelvic, for your spiritual awakening and growth of all kinds. And then the cards above that are your solar plexus, for sensing and feeling. That equals your gut feelings. Now this particular pillar of cards represents the unconscious inner self. And the cards in the center are the heart of the matter. The cards on the bottom right are your throat for your communicating and teaching. The cards above that are your third eye for envisioning and enlightenment. And the cards above that are the crown for knowing and understanding, which hopefully equals wisdom. And now this pillar of cards is your conscious for self. So now hopefully your unconscious inner self is going to start talking to your conscious for self. The famous symbolist, Carl Jung, really believed that our unconscious inner self was not talking to our conscious for self. And that's where the shadow self came out. So let's see what your cards have to say. Let's go over to your past cards. You receive the Knight of Swords and the Ten of Swords. Now, if you're going to get crappy cards, you might as well get them in the past. And you did. And it might seem dismal now, but if you look to the future, you received the Wish card. But let's go back to the past here. You know, the Knight of Swords is impetuous energy. He's not thinking through what he's doing, rushing around. Now, this can be an Aries, Libra, Gemini person, or somebody that has that persona and aura. Or it can be you rushing around in your life in the past. Kind of a chicken with your head cut off is what I'm feeling. You receive the Ten of Swords. Wow. You know, disloyalty, infidelity, heartbreak. You know, both the Swords cards are about intellect and words because they're air, the element air. So maybe there's been some harsh words said. That can't be taken back. There's been some severing of a tie of some sort. Mistakes have been made because of this impetuousness. But there is a redeeming feature about the Knight of Swords is that he is the brainiac. He is the smartest card in the deck, even over the kings and queens. And if you utilize his intellect for your benefit in the past, it's going to affect your future. Now let's look and see what the base of the spine has to say. You receive the Six of Pentacles and the Strength card. You know, you have found strength to get over whatever betrayal or whatever happened with the Ten of Swords. But the Ten is saying that it's at an ending and it was in the past. If you can get over the past and use the Strength card. This is like a get out of jail card free in Monopoly. You know, you got to pull your strength card out and say, yeah, I have the strength now to move on. And you have the Six of Pentacles conjoined with the strength card. This card is about giving and taking. That's an interesting card when Virgo receives it because usually Virgos are the giver and they usually find big time takers that take from them. So hopefully now you have the strength to balance the giving and taking out to make it feel very comfortable for you. 
But here with it being for Virgo, this strength card is saying that you have to find some self-confidence. You know, you have the self-discipline there. You just don't have the self-confidence sometime to go forward. You fear a lot of rejections. And you always feel like you have to be of service to people and catering. And that's untrue. People have to love you for who you are, not what you do for them. Now the cards up above for your sacrum and pelvic, for your spiritual awakening and growth of all kinds, you receive the Ten of Pentacles and the Three of Cups. Excellent. You're feeling spiritually aware. The Ten of Pentacles is the happiness card, but it's about money and wealth as well as health. And if you don't have your health, you don't have wealth. This card is about retirement. And you might not be at the retirement age, but you might feel right now stable and secure. And that's really a good warm and fuzzy feeling. And the Three of Cups is a celebration card. <laughs> You're feeling like doing that little happy dance. You know, this is a card about teamwork, but maybe it's just that you did something and you're patting yourself on the back for doing it. You came into some epiphany or realization. Yeah, maybe you came overcame all of the bad things from your past finally. And now you're feeling like patting yourself on the back. And maybe you even have a support group that's helping you do that and recognizing that you've made a cornerstone in your life. And with the Ten of Pentacles being an ending and new beginning card, the cards up above reinforce that. You receive the World card and the King of Wands. The World card is saying that you're at an end of a cycle. You've earned. You've earned the right to come to this cycle. If not, it would have thrown you back in the major arcana cards to go through the gauntlet again. And you learned. You learn that you don't want to do some things from the past over again. And the King of Wands, too. He's the king that puts you through challenges and obstacles and makes sure you have the endurance to overcome all of this. Kings are there to help you take control, and in this instance, is to take control of your life. And now you're going to be offered new challenges, and you have the king there behind you. And this goes right along with the cards that, for the heart of the matter, the Empress and the Chariot. The Chariot is about taking control, self-discipline, self-confidence. You know, knowing where you're going, it's a card about moving forward. And it's a card about maybe travel, too. Maybe you'll do some travel this year. But when you see the Empress and the Chariot together, this is about duality. This is about yin and yang and the struggle between opposing forces. You know, the Empress is about beauty and love and emblematic of Venus, the planet of beauty and love. But it's also the star that rises in the morning and sets in the evening. And this is a duality of fertility. And so is the chariot about accepting new things. But it is, of course, a victory card. You know, the chariot is saying you've had victory over these opposing forces. And the empress is just kind of like the chariot on top of the Sunday. You know where you're going and you're feeling really good about it. You know, the cosmos gave you the, the genuflex and everything that you can go forward now. You're at the end of a bad cycle. A cycle that you don't want to relive again. And now the cards on the bottom right for your throat, for communicating and teaching. You receive the lover's card and the page of swords. Now the page of swords is kind of a bummer card. You know, he's a party pooper. You know, uh, he can kind of go out of control with his emotions. He doesn't have control with his, his emotions. So it is reminding you here that you do have to have the self-discipline, especially when it comes to love relationships and wanting deeper, more seated relationships because you have the lover's card there. And these are two opposing forces. But I think the page is more bringing out what he actually should do as news and ideas. 
And that goes along with the lover's card because it's a card about decision making. Might sound funny, but it really is. The number six in numerology means love, but it also has this tendency towards sacrifice. And I don't think Virgos really need to know what sacrifice is because I think they do that all the time because they want to serve people. Now this lover's card is between deeds and desires, vice versus virtue and making the right decisions, not impetuous decisions like the sword, page of swords, but well-grounded decisions like the king of wands. It's saying to get a grip on it, on life, get a grip on reality. Don't let it slip away. And up above for your third eye, for your envisioning and enlightenment, you receive the Queen of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles. And I wasn't even looking at this card, but the Queen of Pentacles is saying, get a grip on reality. She's about practical affairs and doing things pragmatically. That's kind of funny. And then the Two of Pentacles is saying it's time for you to make some plans, make some decisions, find some balance. Because this card is about balance, partnership, and decisions. And it can be about opposing forces, like the chariot. You're juggling these and you're trying to keep them in the air. And if you don't have any practical aspects to things, and if you're unrealistic about your expectations, you're going to drop these pentacles. Now the cards up above that for your crown, for knowing and understanding, you see the Five of Swords and the Six of Wands. Now the Five of Swords is a, a conflict card. You know, but a lot of times this is an internal struggle, a, an internal conflict. You're torn between things, and you're not sure what decisions to make, especially with this Two of Pentacles. And it's telling you, you have to be practical when you make these decisions. And if you are, then you'll receive the Six of Wands, the card of victory and of recognition. Kudos, you're being lauded for the decisions you make. But you know, a lot of times this is a feeling of a contest or a competition. And I don't think Virgos really like to participate a lot in that, especially when it comes to love. But it's good to have that feeling that you are being patted on the back. And now you're going to go into outer space with these future cards because you received the Magician and the Nine of Cups, the Wish card. Now the Nine of Cups can be just redeeming one wish. Yeah, here's my card and I'll get my wish. It's like a coupon sometimes. But you have the Magician there and he's bringing in new things. You're taking your ideas and putting them into a reality. You're plugging yourself in between the cosmos and the earthly to do something to benefit you and everybody in your life. And you know what? You're going to make it look really easy. And that's why it looks like magic. And I wish you acceptance, peace, and happiness.